Okay, so so we built a little model which um, exhibits um, a, a collection of, of data drawn from GIS databases for uh, grocery stores and uh, supermarkets on the one hand and convenience stores on the other. We've also scattered some uh, um, um, some homes uh, around the area. We've had people uh, people that are assigned to to homes. Um, how we did that was notable. Um, we 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 made use of a collection of uh, population of homes, and that population of homes in this case was distributed according to some uniform draws. Um, we could also have placed those uh, people using GIS data drawn from, um, from databases um, according to density of housing in different regions or according to a database of locations of homes of people of interest uh, if we have a cohort study or what have you. We then had a population of people. In this population of people, each of them was assigned to our home. So our theory of personhood is embryonic at this point. Soon it will be more elaborated. But each person has a home, a parameter, lowercase uh, h. It's a particular home with which they're associated, drawn from a set of collection of all homes. And for the population of people, we bound them to a randomly chosen home, and we gave them a latitude and longitude as given, an initial latitude and longitude for their initial location as given by their home. Okay? And, you know, upon running that, we're going to see the, the supermarkets and convenience stores, which are drawn from the GIS databases on the one hand, and those uh, scattered homes with associate people resting in them. Um, so uh, we have a good foundation on which to build and we are going to extend this model um, in a couple of ways with and particularly we're going to capture aspects of agent evolution within this model and that agent evolution is going to need to consider three things and we're going to try to hit on at least one of them perhaps two, prior to lunch, okay? The three basic components that need to be put into place are as follows. Number one, we're going to have food, food procurement behavior. People are going to go from their home in search of food, and uh, when going in search of food, they will have some preferences as to whether they go to a supermarket or whether they go to a convenience store. And our model will admit heterogeneity in these preferences. Now these preferences here will be assigned randomly to people. In general, they could be elicited through discrete, uh, discrete choice theory experiments using revealed preference or stated preference data or other means of preference elicitation. Here, we're gonna have each person have some preference and they're gonna go either to convenience stores or grocery stores. And we're gonna start with that, okay? That's going to build on our understanding from yesterday. The second major component that needs to be included in person behavior is going to be at a smaller level yet. It's going to be at the level of, of food consumption. We're going to actually track their consumption of foods. And what they eat will depend on what's in their larder, how much food they have, um, within their, their larder of, of different sorts, okay? And at this point, it's gonna be a very uh, simple representation, but um, we're going to have them choosing to consume meals of different sorts. And that leaves, uh, leaves open the opportunity for understanding how their consumption might depend on uh, their particular context, their physical activity context, et cetera. In this case, we're gonna have a simple set of rules which are gonna govern their consumption behavior based on what's in their fridge, okay? Um, so if there's only uh, pizza, pizza pops and unlikely here in Australia, corn dogs, which I'm told are sold at convenience stores, 
um, in their fridge, they're going to eat them. If there's grocery store meals there, they'll eat them. If there's both, they'll choose between them with a certain preference. If there's nothing, they will go shopping. That would be the second component. It's kind of what they eat. Now, what they eat will be used in turn to track their dietary intake as it relates to the third component of their evolution, to wit, their weight evolution. So we're going to have a depiction of their weight and how that weight changes over time. And initially, it will depend on two types of energy expenditure, namely some basal energy expenditure uh, based on their metabolism, and then secondly, some energy expenditure based on, um, excuse me, initially it would just be, be basal, and then we're going to add uh, nutritional intake uh, into them. Nutritional intake associated with what they eat. So if they're eating pizza pops and corn dogs, um, perhaps floaties, um, they will tend to tend to more weight than if they're eating fresh fruits and vegetables, such as Jeff has kindly provided to me. Um, we are then in a final phase that I hope to hit today. We are going to add a representation, a simple representation of their physical activity, which will add a second type of energy expenditure to the to the mix. And those will be the elements that we're going to be adding into person. Okay? We're going to do so in a stepwise fashion that will build on the knowledge you already have and that will try to try to avoid any one piece being too complicated. This after is, after all, is a teaching model, but it has the kernels of, of elements that we uh, we might use for a real model. So ladies and gentlemen, we have here uh, our depiction of, of Melbourne with some data drawn in from GIS as a placeholder, but it's representative of what we might see in a in a real model. And our first action is going to be to add some mobility to these people to represent um, food seeking behavior. Okay. Now, um, this mobility that we add, um, when we think about a model, we have to think about its scope. What goes in, what goes outside of it. And one of the motivations I cited two days ago for adding something into the scope of model, explicitly endogenizing it, representing explicitly like food seeking behavior is, we might be interested in interventions that affect that. Maybe it's enhanced bus routes that would take people to a, um, to a grocery store. Maybe for, for certain groups, it might include having a shuttle to take people to a grocery store. Or it might include interventions associated with placements of grocery stores, such as the Good Food Junction serves in our own town in a, in a form of food desert. So we might be interested in you know, running the model through some period of time where we look at a base, baseline situation with fewer grocery stores, and then we place a grocery store and we see what the effects are after some period of time with that grocery store in place. So for food procurement by endogenizing it, instead of just hard coding, this person goes a certain fraction, you know, grocery stores or other, by endogenizing it, by making it based on the distance to the grocery store, the convenience store, as well as preferences, we can have people respond as we add grocery stores or, or change the nature of the food environment. Similarly, with the physical activity environment, we can see as people respond as we change the nature of that environment. One of the virtues of endogenizing it. So that's the broader prospect that lies before us. And I'm impressed with how far you've come, but I'd like to make a push on these couple of issues, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build these things up and we'll often be putting them in place in sort of a, uh, uh, most of the way capacity, but with a little tweak to incorporate the fact that the others aren't yet in place. And then we will, and then we will be enhancing uh, enhancing the model so that they work together, these three pieces. To wit, the uh, procurement of food, the consumption of food, and the evolution of, of people's weight status. Those would be the three pieces. Okay. Are we ready to go? Okay. TAs are ready to serve. And um, I'd like you to, uh, to now uh, open up the model. Now, if any of you had trouble you would like to use my copy of the model. I did post it. 
um, GIS Food Environment version one. It is on the site. You can download it. But it seems we're in pretty good shape. So, um, so that I can provide you with um, uh, with successive versions of this, I'm going to save mine as version two and retain days as the time unit. Okay, version two. Great. So now we have version two model, which is going to be expanded. So. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now turn our task as it will typically be, be um, uh, to, to lend it its traditional focus, its, its ongoing focus on person. Person has a little bit been in the background. They've been just a pretty face upon the world. Now we will lend them some behavior. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, the first thing I would like to do is to add in to person a, uh, a parameter, okay? Um, the parameter will be associated with uh, a preference, uh, a preference that, that a given person will have for either um, convenience store meals or grocery store meals. So from the palette, I'd like to add a parameter to person called preference for convenience store meals. Oops, store. Convenience store, not eels, but meals. Okay. Um, uh, they, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if those would <laughs> classify as seafood or what, but um, it's convenience store meals, okay? Um, very good. And it is going to be a double and um, double precision value. And uh, if we don't specify it elsewhere, we'll, we'll say it's drawn between zero and, and one. It'll, it'll lie in the value, the, the range zero to one. Preference for convenience store meals. Okay? And that's going to shape our model at a couple of points. Okay, we're going to have a very simple, almost simplistic model as, as befits teaching models here that are, that are helping to build up skills without being overwhelming, but, but it will have some interest associated with it. Next, I would like to add a state chart, ladies and gentlemen. And this state chart will be called uh, food pr procurement uh, state chart, okay? Um, so food, so we add it in from, you can do it actually in agent down here in the state chart area if you want to, or you can go to the palette. You drag in the state chart entry point, and it's called food procurement state chart. Okay, and I'm going to drag it over here a little bit. I'm moving it with my mouse um, in order to uh, to have it more in the in the center. Okay. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to add in a city called not seeking food. Now this state chart is going to teach teach a principle, maybe two as well. Um, but uh, but it's still going to be fairly fairly simple. So not seeking food is going to be a state. And I'll center that here. You notice because it's underlined we can move it slightly. Frobit's location. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to drag in a second state, which is going to be a state unlike what you've enjoyed before. And this state will be called food seeking. Okay, food seeking. In this state chart, will actually want to be rather large. Notice that you can resize these things. And in fact, resizing them is, is helpful. And I'll, I'll move this down slightly. Notice with the, if I select something, I can use the arrow keys to move it around. I don't have to use the mouse. And I myself am want to use the arrow keys because they can allow for more precise positioning and less, less movement of the, um, the hand. Thank you, sir. Um, Okay, so food seeking. Now, I would like to add in to food seeking 
a set of states. Now, let me repeat that because it may sound audacious. I'm going to add into this state a set of other states. This state is what we'll call, is sometimes called a composite state. I think any logic's term for it is a compound state. It's a hierarchical construct. It, it groups together a set of activities uh, or a set of other states. So we can have states within states. This is sort of a general designation for a set of particular states. Okay. Now, when we have a hierarchical chart like a state chart like that, hierarchical state. Oh, we can add in. Okay, this is most adverse uh, uh, sticky behavior. Um, so I'd like to draw again this initial state pointer, but um, such that it, it is not going to this edge, but it is uh, exhibiting truculence of a most disturbing kind. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just drag it there. Let me let me show how I did that. From the state chart area or from the state chart palette, I found this thing. It looks a little bit like an entry point, but it's not the entry point. The entry point is this bar over it. It's this initial state pointer. What that will mean is when you come into this general state, you will, you will, it's showing where you start within this general state. If, if you don't point to an, a specific state in it, where do you need to start? Whither, whither do you, do you go? Okay, now I've just been logged out of the network, and so I need to, to uh, go and, um, go back and, and read them. Okay, so uh, having done that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to now put in place an initial decision on the part of a person as to where they're going to head as they seek food. Okay, um, whither they will go as they seek food. Okay. So we're going to add in, how would we have this state chart exhibit um, a choice between going one place and another? It's a branch. It's a branch. We're going to add in this branch, OK? Now, branches can depend on all sorts of things. They can depend on a person's characteristics, their history, their beliefs, their attitudes, their, uh, uh, their preferences. In this case, it will depend very simply on their, their preferences. Now, this thing is again giving me some trouble, but um, uh, I'm going to drag it there. Okay, so we're going to have this branch, and this branch will go one of two directions. And I'm going to draw one of them, and then we're going to have a comparable direction. So this is we're going to have a comparable parallel set of states the other way. There's going to be two of them. To wit, heading to supermarket. You know move it over slightly, give ourselves some ample room. And next, here, there's going to be a state which represents shopping in supermarket. Okay? We are going to have a comparable set of states on the other side, but before we go and copy it, and rename it, which would be a, a quick way to do it. I would like to go change this transition here from a timeout to an agent arrival. Now, what does that mean, an agent arrival transition? Can anyone say? What does that mean? And I'll call this transition arrive at supermarket. What does that indicate? Under what condition would agent arrival be triggered? Remember, transitions are triggered. If you're if you're in the state, only if you're in the state from whence, uh, in the state whence they come, are you can are you potentially going to go down this transition? And there'll be some under which it is triggered. Under what condition will this transition be triggered? They get to the supermarket. Yeah, they get to the. They arrive at the supermarket. They have been in motion to the supermarket and. They arrive there. They arrive at that location. Okay. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to to have uh, those components, and next we will 
go and take this and copy it to the now okay it it I just pasted it and I do not know whether it went so I'm gonna do undo and I'm gonna show you a better way to copy any logic is a terrible habit ladies and gentlemen when you do copy and you do paste it putting it in some place I can't see and I don't know where it is and often it lands atop of something and and it's a pain to extract it and it's 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 a it's a di most displeasurable phenomenon and I've tried to tame it but I've had very little luck but a much better way to do it is select it hold down control while dragging hold down control and you can then let go and it will dra it will copy it so how did I do that? I'll, I'll do it one more time just to show you, although I'll delete this time. I selected it, I held down control while dragging it, and then I let go and it copied it. Now that one I don't need, I just want one copy. And does anyone want to guess? In, in, in addition to heading the supermarket, shopping the supermarket, we need a heading to what? Convenience, convenience store. store. So we're going to have heading to convenience store. And we're going to have shopping in convenience so store. So if you drag the name, it does that. Convenience store. Okay. The backdrop. Anyways, what we're doing Are we okay with that? Uh, Ten seconds. So one sure. Minute, uh, heading to convenience store. That's what we're doing. Right here. So. Okay. Okay. So, who would like a little bit more time here? Okay. Ready? Okay. Uh, who would like uh, a bit of help? A bit of help? Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, uh, so, Colin here. Okay, who else? Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing I would like to do will be to add another transition. Okay? And I could have done this before copying, but it just seemed easier to do it here. Okay? So I'm going to drag another transit, another. Um, well, okay, let's do first things first. Just the, the logically be a bit clearer. I'm going to connect up each of these states to this branch. Now, as as it is typically shown before when I do this, it um, it's going to show them both as defaults. We're going to have it, in fact, make only one a default and the other a a, um, a condition. So this one going to the convenience store will be a condition. So what that means is um, first it checks only one can be the default, all the others it checks the conditions for and if none of them are true it will choose the default. But if one of those conditions is true it will grab that one. Okay? Who needs Noli and help? Okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what we've just done is having copied that, we've added two transitions from this branch, one to each of these points. And we made more than that. We left one of them as the default, but initially both of them were shown as defaults, and we made this one a condition. Now the condition here will be particularly simple, ladies and gentlemen. The condition here will be driven by the person's preference. And it will flip a coin that with this prob probability, this preference, will be heads, otherwise tails. If it's heads, they will go this way. And the way we'll do it computationally is we'll flip a coin, it'll be true with that probability as given by this, um, by this, uh, by this uh, parameter, 
and false otherwise. Does anyone remember there's a function in any logic? It's listed in the set of that, that sort of um, tips, that set of uh, uh, background material or the set of um, handy reference materials they gave to you. There's a, there's a function, we've used it before here, maybe more than once, that with a certain probability, it does a Bernoulli trial. With a certain probability, it returns true, otherwise false. Does anyone remember what that function is named? I'll give you a hint. It begins Random with R. True. Random true. Random true. This takes a probability. How do we know that? Well, if we did this, we could see here probability P generates true with the probability P. It does a Bernoulli trial. So we're going to do random true preference for convenience store meals. That's what the condition is going to be. If the preference is very high, if it's close to one, with very high likelihood it will be true and therefore they'll go to the right. If, the, if it is uh, very, uh, if it is uh, very low preference, close to zero, with very high likelihood it will be false and therefore they will go which way? If this condition is false, where, uh, whence or whither will they go? To the, to the supermarket. Okay? Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, next we are going to add an estate down here, just outside of this, that is going to be called in transit to home. Okay? Are we okay with that? Okay. And there'll be two transitions. One from the shopping and convenience store, one from the shopping and the supermarket. Here we go. Okay. <coughs> now, these transitions for the shopping in the supermarket and shopping in convenience store will be each associated with um, with some time. Okay. Um, so uh, here uh, for for uh, shopping in a grocery store, um, I'd like to. Uh, Oh, excuse me, shopping and supermarket rather. I keep on saying grocery store, it should be supermarket. I'd like it to, to have a timeout of one hour. So uh, this would be, I'm calling this finished shopping in supermarket, something like that. And then this other trend, so that would be one hour that you'll remain in the supermarket before leaving. This transition here is called finished shopping in convenience store. This will be instead based on a timeout of, of in minutes. It will be 15 minutes. You pop over to the milk bar. You do a uh, milk and bread run perhaps but you maybe you get those pizza pops and and uh, corn dogs what, what else is in the supermarket in the convenience store uh, chips pies okay okay um okay um they add lard to the larder um Okay. Okay. Um, okay. They put the lard in the larder. Okay. Great. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have this transit at home. And guess? Uh, can you can you um, guess from the name to what this one will be hitched up? To what? Whence or whither will this go? From in transit to home. Hi. It'll go home. Indeed. So let's add a transition. Notice. Uh, Notice that I have my ways of dealing with any logics, picadillos about, about connecting things. So I just dragged the transition in. I want to go from here to here. Um, and maybe there's a way to do it through clicking like there is in discrete event modeling, but I don't, I don't. Is, I, I, 
there's a, a little option for actually drawing the transition there. I don't. I do the exact same thing you do, but I know that I think you can actually draw whatever route you want. If you click the little icon next to transition, like in the palette. Oh, that little yeah, thing. Yeah, you click that, and then you'll turn your cursor to like a drawing tool. Oh, oh, okay. That that's really nice. Um, so. So double click to activate drawing mode. Okay, you're gonna have to get out of this um, when I'm done. Double click. Okay, watch this. Then I can click here and click here. Yeah. You can also click and then you click somewhere else. It'll give you like an elbow. Like, uh, like. Oh, oh, okay. Let's try try that. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna I gotta double click this. Click here. Click, click, um, click here. Uh, it, it exhibited dysfunction. Okay, um, so <laughs> I'm gonna click here and, okay, there we go. Um, and now by double clicking here, I can I insert a, what any uh, terms correctly, an elbow. Um, and I, I'm sort of routing it around like that, okay? Now, what sort of transition do you think this will be? If that state down there represents in transit, what sort of transition do you think this will be? It's a what transition? And well, I'll give you a hint. It'll be called arrived at home. <laughs> what sort of transition will it be? It's an ancient arrival transition, indeed. So when they get home, it will be um, home. Now, that's that's great, but we need it to do more than that. We, we need it to actually head home, right? Um, now, uh, let's, let's put in the logic. Does anyone remember? How can we tell it to go home? Well, for this state, when we enter it, what do we have to put here to go home? Anyone remember? Remember, people have a home. People have a parameter called home. So what would we need to do here? Well, for you folks, for many of you, using any logic 7.2, what you put here is very simple. Move to. Now, if we want to be explicit, we can say this uh, move to, move myself, move to home. For, for most of you, is this a command or is this computing a value? This is a command. It's saying do this. It's not just computing some value like a formula. It's actually doing it. So we need a semicolon. Now, for most of you, this will probably work because you're using an AnyLogic version for which that happens. But for me, it's unhappy. If I tell it this, um, it will probably indicate um, displeasure. Um, in which case, I'm going to need to. Um, mumble. Um, yeah. Um, okay. okay. Okay, uh, I thought I'd check that yesterday and oh, it's it's distracted by other errors. That's why. Okay, um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, it just doesn't know to be displaced by that because it's so displeased by other things it's being distracted. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit more compact by dragging this up. I don't need this thing to be way down here and I'll change this elbow to, to, to sort of uh, be, be well positioned. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so just to make this a little bit more compact, um, it's missing a key transition. Where therefore lies that missing transition? You're not seeking to yeah, we need something that goes here. It's saying like this is an orphan. You can't get here right now. You can't get here from there. So we need, we, you can't get there from the state chart entry. Okay, so we need to add a transition here. And ladies and gentlemen, I would like to add one. And for now, um, we're going to leave it like this. So um, seek, I'm gonna call it seek food transition. And 
You know, as a good practice to make your model transparent, I'm going to say show name so it's shown. And I really should have done this for this others just to make it apparent what they what they kind of mean. Um, you don't have to do that, but uh, it's a it's a good practice to kind of um, uh, to kind of label label transitions. It makes clear to people who look at your model what's the meaning of a given transaction, and and so I'm I'm just going through and, and labeling <laughs> these things. Okay, models are built in human <coughs> theaters, and um, it's nice to be able to sort of uh, uh, accommodate that. Okay. Um, Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um, seeking food. We'll actually make it a time out of uh, uh, a time out of, of uh, maybe not every one day, but every three days for now. We're going to change it in just a bit. We're going to change it in a little bit, but every three days to go food shopping, roughly twice a week. Great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but something else has to happen here. When they're seeking food, they need to go somewhere. So this is a timeout, three days. And what will the action be? Well, sorry, excuse me. The action is actually here. Um, but with a certain probability, they head to the nearest supermarket, to the convenience store, otherwise they head to the supermarket. Um, we could actually put it in these, these transitions, or we could choose to put in these entry actions here. Since the state is called heading to, I'm going to make its entry action going to be move to the nearest one. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, for the nearest store here, this is what I'd like you to do. Are we ready? We're going to move to the nearest store. Can I tell you what to type here for the entry action for this guy and this guy? Are you ready? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to do the following. For the entry action, we could again say this dot, but I'm going to omit that because that's implicit. I'm showing you different models where I adhere to different conventions with respect to that. So move to get nearest agent. And you have to tell, for get nearest agent to do its job, you have to tell it, well, out of which agent should I consider? Which agent should I consider moving to for convenience stores? Well, the set of all convenience stores. And where do those live? And you remember? In Maine. So this will be Maine.convenience. Do you remember what we called it? It fills it out for us, convenience store collection. Let me put that up, ladies and gentlemen, on the big screen. This is what I put in this place, heading to convenience store. This is what I put. With your leave, I will walk you through it a little bit more. And to do that, I will use my umbrella pointer. Okay. Um, So here, I am going to determine what's the nearest agent to me of all those in this collection of convenience stores, and I'm going to move there. Ladies and gentlemen, where did that collection of convenience stores, whence did that come? Who created that convenience store collection? You did. Remember that? We, we searched in the GIS map, we had the list, we said create those agents, we, we select them, we right click them, we said create the collection. Do you remember that? That's that collection. We're going to determine, we're going to ask any logic, hey, determine for me the nearest agent amongst those, and I'm going to move there. Now, any logic actually provides several methods for getting the nearest agent. And one of them is actually get nearest agent by route. It will actually compute on the routes and so on. For now, we're going to put that aside, but just be aware that um, that you can actually do get nearest agent. I think its name is, is, is actually maybe that, uh, get nearest agent by route. Do you see this? OK. Now, I'm going to tell you that this is very similar to what goes into heading to supermarket. For heading to supermarket, what do you think we have to do differently? 
Yeah, we have to change it from a convenience store collection, ladies and gentlemen, to a growth to a supermarket collection. So it's going to be main dot supermarket collection. Okay. So I'm going to move to the supermarket collection. So let me put that up on the big screen. But you should be able to just auto complete and be done with that. Are you okay with this? Okay, who would like a little bit more time? A little bit more time? Okay, for those who are ready, I would invite you to run the model now. Let's, first of all, let's build it and make sure that it knows what we mean. By the way, it'll probably complain. No, no, it's not complaining at all. Okay. Um, okay, it's also not showing me where it normally does that it's a happy camper either. So let me, let me just uh, try building it and see why it's... Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and, and let's... Okay. Uh, let's see if it's... Okay, yeah, it's not... Not giving nice feedback here. Okay, let's just see what what happens when we run this thing. Okay, yep, it's it's hunky dory. Okay, and what's going to be going on now? Can anyone say? Okay, you notice it's running. What's going on? It's running till time three. What's going to happen at time three? Can anyone say? Why is time three significant here? Yeah, they, they're getting, yeah, they have to go f f food shopping here. And you'll notice that there's this curious icon here. What any logic's doing is actually it's figuring out the distance to all the supermarkets from each of these homes. And to do that, it's actually going to the servers uh, for, for routing and figuring out, okay, where's, um, you know what for for the different routes I think I think it's deriving okay uh, which routes will it take etc and and it, in any case it's using GIS information so this is one of the reasons I started with a very small um, population now it's worsened because all of us are doing this at once every one of us is hitting the server at once and it is Putting a request in place. Okay, now we're starting to see some 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 agent um, agent movement. You notice these agents have gone to these locations, and now some of them have returned home. Um, you can tell it because they have um, they have inverted themselves. Who else needs help here? So now it is going on. And one of the characteristics of these models, ladies and gentlemen, is. Once they run for a bit, they tend to run much faster because it's figured out all the routes, what's the nearest agent, figured out all the routes between them. Actually, not the nearest agent, it's figured out all the routes between them. And so it's very quick for it to then subsequently plot things. So here you see these people engaged, here are people at home, and they're making runs to other stores. So let me slow this down a little bit, um, and, and we can actually oh, yeah, see see this happen. So I should slow it down just before time 21. And here we go. I'll slow it down here. And we should actually go change the, the speed of these people. That's the best way to do it. Oh, have an extra hitting the seat. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I would like to change the speed of the individuals here um, so that it's uh, reflective of, of walking speed, okay? And that will make it both easier to, to sort of see and a little bit more realistic in terms of the, the speeds involved. Um, but at time 21, those individuals should indeed gain, engage in shopping behaviors. Yeah, okay, so time 21, I would have expected that they would, they would go once again shop. Ah, yeah, this, this guy up there shopped. Um, Okay, yep, yeah, there, there they are. Yep, yeah, they're moving back and forth. Oh, I know, it's not time 21 because they've spent time in stores already, so it's a little bit different than time 21. It's time, it's, 
It starts at three, and then after that, they'll spend some time at the store, so the next time will be a little bit after time six, etc. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to person in this model, and for person, let's go set their speed. So I'm selecting person, I'm going to the properties of person, and for their initial speed, I would like to set it to one meter per second. So roughly on the order of sort of walking speed, okay? One meter per second. Okay, um, I'm going to zoom out. I saw that by zooming in, by double clicking on this, I could zoom in, double clicking, zoom out. So I set their speed to one meter per second. Who needs help finding that? Okay, um, Annie? Uh, okay, who needs help uh, finding that? Okay. Um, so show when it's it's you got a person here and you go down to movement. I lost my camera. Oh okay. Okay. From view or somewhere. Sorry. What? Lost my canvas. Oh oh uh, if you lost your canvas you can do view. Um, oh okay so let's, let's, let's okay there you go view and then. Uh, it should be under, okay. Uh, actually, let's, the easier thing to do is to probably, um, can you go look at projects and double click on main, for example. Okay, it should, there, 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 there you are, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, having made that change, if you go to person, you go down to movement, you may have to expand it, and you go to initial speed, I would like to set it to one. I'd also like, and this is important for aesthetic reasons, I'd like to uncheck rotate animation towards movement. Do you see that? Do you see there's this rotate animation towards movement? I'd like to uncheck it, okay? And now I'd like to run this. Okay, there's, in, in mind, they, it wasn't that they weren't moving. I mean, once I thought about it, they don't move at exactly that time because they're spending time in supermarkets between, so you're saying they're not moving at all, though? Okay, you can see, do you, do you folks see this? Um, when this person, I'll call it up here, but when this person um, is to engage in shopping behavior, they actually do move along these street routes very clearly. So here's a person over here, and when they engage in food shopping behavior, they'll actually move along these, uh, these routes. I'm, I'm running it at one-tenth the speed here. And you can see, yeah, someone from there is going, okay? Alternatively, you might be able to see it even clearer, ladies and gentlemen, for the seek food transition, if you make that not every three days, but every one day, if you make this seek food transition, make it every one day for now, you should be able to watch as they are routed between the different, the different locations here, okay? Um, so here it's going to load this in. Here's time, time one, it's sort of figuring this out. And now they're engaged in more, much more frequent movement. I'm gonna slow it down so you can see it online. But individuals are moving, oops, I'm gonna make it one, one tenth here. And you can see they're, they're, they're engaged in movement along the thoroughfares, okay? Here we go. So do you see something like that? Movement of the agents? Okay, so, okay, who needs help now? So we put in place a general mechanism here, but we're gonna need to endogenize certain features of the situation. Ladies and gentlemen, right now we have, we have a gone and we've placed it so that they engage in 
movement to the grocery store once every day here uh, or to the convenience store um, and we're going to change it so instead that will depend on exhaustion of their larder okay um, so ladies and gentlemen we're going to oh it looks like some people are actually off they live off the map I'm, I'm guessing because um, they're, they're coming down from up uh, a little bit far up I don't know if I can if I can move up but in any case uh, here we oh yeah yeah see some of them we need we're going too far up in terms of their location okay um, okay um, okay so ladies and gentlemen I'd like to stop this model we have one of the three components in place we will now turn our attention with a nod to lunch to the second component. Is that okay? Okay, who needs, who needs help? Who needs help? Uh, Dylan and Annie, could you talk a little bit about uh, the nature of the dysfunction you're observing? Um, well, the, the problems that I'm seeing is just that we have move twos in the, the wrong spot. So a common thing that happens is people will be tempted to put move to in this transition. And that means, it basically says, once I've arrived home, then move home. So you have to have move to in this one, or optionally in this transition. And then uh, another thing that I've seen in GIS models, if it takes a long time for people to do anything, the, the model time unit itself uh, sometimes can be set to seconds. This, uh, actually those two things Good. seem to happen a lot with uh, the GIS examples that we do. So it's it's nice that it's easy to diagnose. Yeah. Anyway, I will come take a look over here and see if you can. Okay. Just a, yes. Can I take a more general question? What's up? Yes. In another type of environment, for example, if these weren't, you know, retail assets, they were sort of, you know, primary care centers or whatever. Right. And would you be able to embed a discrete event simulation where basically if the waiting time is too long, it's so more than a week, yes. basically the certain people just didn't bother going? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that would be done via embedding a, a DES model specifically, Correct. or would you do it in the States? Um, you could do it with States, or you could do it with the GIS model in general. Oh, sorry, a, a DES model. Either one would be viable, and we have models that exhibit uh, either, either method. Um, generally, I would advise using the DES there um, if you have resource constraints that will govern how long people wait. Um, because DES is, is extremely good at sort of capturing the impact of these resource constraints. You could capture it with a pure agent-based model, but it wouldn't be as natural to do so. It would take quite a bit of mechanism to reason about how long is the waiting time based on, on how many people are being able to be seen by the resources in place. And you'd be kind of duplicating a lot of DES functionality. So I think the natural way to do that would be with a, with a DES model. And and you would have people uh, bulk um, uh, leave if they've been waiting for, for too long. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Other question? Yes, Chris. Why do you have this set up as a state chart within that big right. uh, food seeking? Why not just go straight from taking food to that choice? Well, one reason, thanks for, for asking, um, that is optional. It's not a required thing. There are times where we will want to compute statistics which kind of um, gloss over the details of exactly what in exactly what detailed state someone is located they might just want to ask you know what fraction this is implausible but let me give you an example what fraction of the time do people spend in food seeking regardless whether it's to a grocery store or to a convenience store you want to just ask you know what what what's what fraction of the time people spend food seeking if you want to have a statistic that asks, like, count the number of people currently food seeking, you could say, are they in state food seeking? Mm -hmm. And it would include any of those sub states, which would be convenient sometimes, instead of having to enumerate exhaustively each of those states. So it's a, it's a convenience mechanism. There are some additional reasons um, for doing that. Among other things, um, if you have, a, if you have a, a composite state like this, um, you can get a real economy of uh, presentation, like if there's certain behaviors that affect any state within here, 
any of these states are subject to certain behaviors. You could just um, you could just put those behaviors associated with the food seeking state. You don't have to duplicate them for these. Um, an example for this would be a mortality transition, where where you know any of these states suppose you're, you can engage in, in you know in, in mortality or, or mixing behavior. So you might have a, a single transition from the whole food seeking state out. And by implication, that can apply to any any of these states, mm -hmm. and it will logically, it will aesthetically be much clearer because it's associated with the entire state. Okay. Similarly, you can have um, you can actually have multiple transitions into here, um, and rather than needing to be wired up to particular things, they just come into this whole state, and it will take care of routing them appropriately. So it lends itself to a, a certain aesthetics. And it lends itself also to um, to convenience in terms of, of querying the agent state in the model. So if you did that, and yeah. say you had like a mortality, no. S supposing this was some sort of health behavior where you wanted to know cardiovascular disease, and you had a separate right. thing that was cancer because you didn't care about yep. that, but you were not allowed for it. That's right. Can people die in transit, or is it just they're coming from those states to that mortality? Oh, uh, that, that's a great question. Um, so, uh, you mean like, could they die from this state? Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is, suppose you had cancer as a competing cause of mortality. Sure. You've, you've got a transition that takes some time, arrive yeah. at supermarkets, take oh, time. Oh, oh, I see. So they're spending time in transit. Can you yeah. make the competing mortality apply oh, oh, yeah. to that? That's a great question, Chris. Great question. Um, so the question is, you know, um, so you've got this in transit to home state, and, and this, this uh, you know, there's, there's some time someone's spending in transit to home. Yeah. And um, are they subject during that time to die from a competing risk or yeah. to be subject to, to some competing risk? They develop yeah. cancer or, or they develop yeah. Yeah. cardiovascular disease, COPD, whatever. Um, uh, so, yeah, they're actually, at a, at a technical level, they're in this state until they arrive. Uh -huh. So all transitions in any logic, all transitions, when they fire, they're instantaneous. They're, so they're just events. They're they're you know it's like it's an incident it's a momentary thing so they're actually not in this arrival transition for a long time they're actually in this state in transit to home until they arrive in which case they will with zero time essentially arrive at not seeking mm. food mm. And, so, so and so they're actually always in a state so if you had the competing mortality would yep. apply to that state in yep. transit. Yep. Yep. that's right yep. now we're going to see um examples of models with mortality, natality, uh, immigration, and it may be today, depending how far we get with this, and, um, and you'll see how you can capture mortality so that, that um, that's uh, not, not a problem. But yes, it, it, it could apply to any of these states. Okay, yeah. great question. Any other questions right now, what we've done here? Okay, so um, with your leave then, what I want to do is to go on to the next. I had mentioned three major things we want to do with this model. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll stop recording. Uh